I'm excited to see all of you here, and I hope it's a fantastic experience for all of you, including the Q&A tonight. Um, so I'm going to go about this uh, very casually. I'm going to share a, a recent story, a story very personal to me um, that I hope you all might be able to take a little bit away from. And then after that, I'm going to open it up for Q&A. Whatever is on you all's hearts as players, parents, you're welcome to chime in as well. If I have an answer, I'm happy to share it for you. So. Um, so the story I wanted to share this time, when I did this event last fall, I talked a lot about kind of the college recruitment process, practice process, et cetera. Um, but I think in between then and now, I actually went through something um, on my golf journey, actually. And it was my first time kind of coming, coming up against this mental battle um, in my career. And I learned a lot from it. So I wanted to share that direct experience with you all. Um, and so I would say this story probably starts about April of last season. Um, and, and I'll preface this by saying last season was a really tough season for me. I ended up having to go back to Q series and retain my car there. So that can kind of tell you a bit of uh, what golf was like for me on the course last year. And I mean, that's real. Golf isn't always easy. Um, but I think about l April of last year, I had about two tournaments a in a row in the spring where I didn't putt um, as well as I was used to and actually saw some short putts start to get away from me. And I've always been someone that, you know, based on how I was trained and then just also my personality, I always have an incredibly positive approach to the game. So no matter what happens to me in one round, no matter what happens to me in a tournament, I'm always of the mindset that that's all right, next week will be the bounce back week. But I think that over the course of those few tournaments and those few events in the spring, a little bit kind of crept into my stroke that took away a little bit of my confidence on those short putts. And I think instead of addressing the root of the problem there, right there in that moment, which was not technical, because when I'd be playing casually, doing my practice rounds, etc., there was nothing wrong. I was making the putts, everything was going on. So clearly that's not a technical thing, that's something in my head. And I think that can be the hardest part as an athlete to admit. If there's something technical going on, you get with your coach, you get with your parents, you drill it in, you get through it, boom, you're ready for the next event. But if something starts to creep into your mind a little bit, that's a lot harder to battle. And it's also a little bit tougher to communicate because as an athlete, sometimes you don't want to admit that something is causing you a little bit of anxiety or stress on the golf course and uh, and so I let that get away from me at the beginning and it kind of it kind of just um, catapulted throughout the season honestly and then I found myself back against the wall late summer I've got a few events now to capitalize make some finishes and get myself back into the top 100 on the rankings list and again I'm trying to do that and I hadn't addressed the fact that I was feeling a little bit stressed about my putting on the green so boom we go through the season I don't slide back into the top 100 and now I'm at Q series dealing with the same thing so now what I did was I actually got a new putting coach who was fantastic um, and I started dedicating all of my time hours and hours every day to doing these putting drills just to regain that confidence but again I think I was taking a look at the technical aspect of it and thinking if I tweaked a little something in my stroke or if I just put in hours and hours and hours that was going to be good enough for me to see the improvement that I wanted going into Q school and I think what made a lot of this even tougher for me was that last season I hit the ball incredibly well and so I was having a lot of those opportunities um, for birdie conversions and it just made it that much more uh, that that much more difficult to um, you know kind of process what was going on because I knew T to green I was giving myself those opportunities that I needed and uh, I took a moment at Q series I was rooming with one of my best buds who was there at the event that week and I came in I think it was after the third round of week one of Q series <laughs> and I played I hit the ball incredibly well um, the first two days didn't capitalize on those birdie opportunities second day or the third day a little bit of a not necessarily struggling but missed a couple of greens and wasn't getting those up and downs and then all of a sudden I'm a couple over par and I'm wondering how did I get here based on the great ball striking that I had the first two days should have been well under par by that event now my back's against the wall and I have to go out and play well tomorrow to get to second week and I'm sitting here like I'm a better golfer than this what's going on 
And uh, so I finally sat there and she said, well, if you want to talk about it, we can. So we ate dinner, giggled a little bit, and I kind of felt ready to open up. And I said, you know what? You know, this is, I'm just kind of blown right now and I don't know what's going on and I don't know what to do about it. And that was the first time I'd said those words to anybody since I've been going through that struggle this season. And uh, I said, I hit it great. I'm giving myself opportunities and I feel like I'm letting everything slip away from me and I'm just so frustrated that I'm not even having fun with golf right now. And uh, she said, you know what, I've been there. And she shared something that she uh, did for herself back when she was kind of going through the same thing. Um, and she said that what helped her was listing all of the things and the little fears and things that crept into her mind when she was on the golf course. Um, uh, on a sheet of paper and she said I listed every single one of them down and I laughed I was like if I list everything that's going through my mind it'll be like three pages long <laughs> and uh, she said no and she looked at me dead serious she said yeah mine was like two full notebook pages <laughs> of uh, things that were kind of causing her fears on the putting grade and she said what she did after that but she went next to them and wrote down the reasons that every single one of them was silly and and was holding her back from performing and being her best self and something like a light switch clicked right there. And I think that's because I took a second to be mentally vulnerable. And I think that's incredibly tough because we want to seem and we want to go through the motions of, most of us are, we're confident young women. We feel like we can attack the problems that come up um, uh, with confidence, with ease. And then we can always stay on top of our game, stay on top of our, um, on top of our thoughts and stay positive and for the most part that's true but in this moment i spent an entire season trying to will myself through something that just got tougher and tougher for me to battle because i did not take the moment to step back to the people who are around me in my circle and cared about me and say hey this is what's in my head right now and i need to figure out how to get over it because it's holding me back and so the second that i did that and it was the first time that whole season I got that advice. It sounded, it was so simple, but it was so profound for me. And I said, yeah. And so I did the same thing that night. And I went back, I wrote all the reasons they were silly. And one of them was, and, and I'm gonna share this with you. I actually haven't shared this publicly, but one of the little thoughts that would go through my head was, has anybody ever been over a putt? You've lined it up, you feel good about it. You set up over it and you realize, eh, my line's a little off or this is not the line. And you step back off of the putt. I got to a point where I wouldn't even step off the putt because I was concerned about not looking like I was sure because that's how I was feeling. I was just holding on to confidence. And uh, you know, it's a tough place to be in. And I felt like also, you know, as a professional athlete, it shouldn't be that tough for me. You know, that's the little stuff that I should be past right now. And um, so just taking that moment to be honest and, uh, and, and accept the help that was there for me and that probably would have been there for me had I come to the people around me sooner and been honest. And then the next day I went out and I started making putts, just that simple because I was, I was not afraid to commit and I was not afraid to trust myself anymore because I realized all those little fears that I had on the golf course or on the putting green were incredibly silly. I'd hit a great approach shot and I was excited then to step to the green and have the opportunity to go make that birdie. And literally since that day through now the last few months i've been having so much fun on the golf course again and it's just been a relief um but yeah that's just a, a story a personal story that i wanted to share with you all and and hopefully that you all can glean a little bit of something from that and i and i think the biggest lesson for me there was it's okay to be like you know what i'm not feeling great right now in my mind and talk to the people that care about me and get that, uh, get that reinforcement and that feedback early, not when my back's against the wall at Q Series and my 2022 season's riding on this performance. So yeah, that's uh, just something I wanted to share. So that's my story. And then uh, I'll open it up to Q&A for the rest of you all. And we, uh, we can talk about literally anything. We can talk about college golf. We can talk about practice. We can talk about Stanford Golf Course. I love this golf course. You guys need some uh, ideas for how to play certain holes. It's been a while, but I'm sure I got those. But yeah, anything you guys want. And, and thank you for listening and having me up here. Thank you. Outside of golf. What are some things I like to do outside of golf? Um, 
anything with my best friends at home. They're, uh, it's actually quite funny because they're so used to me being gone all the time that I now when I'm home I have to notify them because I'll get on Instagram and see them out having fun and doing things without me and I'm like dang where was my invite and they were like how should we know that you're not on the road. Um, so uh, let's see shoot anything recently we went bowling just randomly. Um, we love to do brunch in the city and then maybe go to like an art show or a museum or something like that. We all love like movies and stuff like that so we'll watch shows together. Um, when I'm out on the road one of my favorite things to do off the golf course is like hike or find trails or just see you know what there is to do in the cities that we go to. So um, literally I'm just I just love to be with my friends so whatever they're doing I'm tagging along. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, what are some things that you recommend to people that are in the middle of the recruiting process? Great question. Great question. What are some things that I recommend to people in the middle of the recruitment process? Um, Gosh, there's an entire list. So I guess I'll just talk a little bit of, I'll just take this moment to talk a little bit about recruiting in general and the things that I think are important to look at when you're choosing a school. Um, I'd say you definitely want to talk to the girls on the team one-on-one um, -on -one and you know try to get them by themselves and not necessarily with the coach right there in their ear and hear a little bit about how much they love the program um, and what it's like for them being an athlete at that particular school and and how the coaching environment is um, so you'll find out a lot from players whether or not they really love the team and you can kind of see that that's authentic um, when having those conversations with them another thing that I love to do is find out from them and from the coach how they do qualifying for the travel team and uh, and I think that this is one of the biggest things um, you want to create or you want to be in an environment where a coach creates a fair chance for everybody to make the travel team including the freshmen and the new players who they might not know or have seen play as well but have a lot to offer and so most coaches will have some type of qualifying system set up and I say a coach should have at minimum three of those spots earned through qualifying maybe four um, uh, depending on how stacked the program is and so what I mean by that is if you have a coach you have five travel slots and if you have a coach who handpicks the whole team well let's say you you know and the coach don't have the greatest relationship or let's say this player has over the last couple seasons made the travel team all the time and has been a good player but maybe this season's not going well for them and you're performing better well if they're handpicking you're not getting that opportunity to shine right and so I think by having a fair qualifying system you give everybody on the team the opportunity to compete at every single tournament and that's incredibly important and it's fair and it's crucial if you want to be able to develop your game and uh, have the best college experience possible and so that's another thing that I would look for um, when you're talking to the coaches and going through the recruitment process um, and another thing is it's not guaranteed coaches change so you also want to make sure that you choose a, a program where you also like the school itself um, academically. And so, you know, it's interesting. I actually was recruited by a different coach than I was coached by my freshman year. And, uh, and so the coach that recruited me ended up retiring and a new coach came in. So it's a good thing that I actually loved the idea of coming to Stanford and playing here because I could have been like, oh my goodness, if I'd committed to that coach and they were gone and I had no interest in the school, well now I'm not looking as I'm not looking forward to um, um, my experience there as a student and as an athlete. And so I think that's another uh, really important thing to take into consideration. Um, and if I think of anything else as we're going through this Q&A, I'll answer. But that was a great question. Yeah, and if anybody has any more specific questions about recruiting, happy to answer those too. Yes. Uh, if you could pick one thing to practice on, what would it be and why? Can I get one thing in each category, like putting, chipping, driving, or just you want the, you want what I think is the most important out of sure. all of them? Well, how about both? Okay, okay. Um, Actually, when I think about the importance of the game, I think all of them are incredibly important. And the more I play, the more I realize that. 
But I think the two things that have the biggest weight and impact on your score are frankly your putting and your tee shots. If you're accurate off the tee, you're always in a good position to hit the green on the next shot. And so you actually find that. I find the days where I don't play as well are the days that I missed a couple fairways on holes that it wasn't friendly to miss fairways on. And so I think being accurate off the tee is incredibly important. And I think that a lot of times when we go through junior golf, that's understated, but it's so important to be in the fairway and be great with you. And honestly, the farther you hit it, the better. I've been working a lot on increasing my distance because I swear every single year they lengthen the holes. We have 430 yard par fours now. I don't know who they think I am, but I guess I got to answer and get stronger. So, um, you know, that's, it's incredibly important to have that distance and that accuracy off the tee. Um, and then putting. I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to. So when I think about what I would practice, um, if I, actually, I had to choose a putting drill that I would do every single day, if that was the only one that I could do, um, it's actually a um, three over three under drill that I do from six and 12 feet. And so I put a couple tees out at six feet, a couple tees out at 12 feet, and the six footers are par putts, the 12 footers are birdie putts. And you wanna get to three under before you get to three over. And uh, that's it right there. Those are the money numbers. I think those six footers, um, you stick an iron shot, that's great. But a lot of the times from the bunker, from, the, from off the green, you end up somewhere between four and six feet for those par putts. So if you're comfortable making those, you're saving. And then the best iron shots you have often end up somewhere between eight and 15 feet. So if you're making those 12 footers um, on that drill, then you're setting yourself up to make a lot of birdies on the golf course. So that would be my choice of focus if I had to choose, but I want to work on it all. <laughs> What's the biggest transition between junior golf and college golf? Um, the question is, what's the biggest transition between junior golf and college golf? Um, you know, I honestly think two transitions. One is I think you have a bit more of time management on yourself because I think when a lot of us are in high school, um, our parents have a little bit more access to our schedule, so maybe we're following that a little bit more closely and the idea of how to manage things are not on us as much. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the transitions, and I actually love this aspect of it, is I feel like in high school you get a lot of busy work and then in college you have class and you have the assignments on the syllabus that you get at the beginning of every semester and no curveballs are thrown at you outside of that. So you literally see in front of you right then and there um, what, your, what your quarter, what your semester is gonna look like and you have the freedom outside of team practice to uh, schedule completely what you want that to look like. And so I think managing that amount of time and figuring out how you want to use it is the toughest transition. And, um, you know, I think in the beginning, if you're, uh, you know, you're lucky enough to make a few buddies right off rip, you've always got the team um, um, to rely on. And uh, so while some of the transition just to independence, I feel like in general can be a little tough. I think as an athlete, you actually have it pretty lucky because you have a built-in family right off the jump and you're kind of all on a similar schedule. And uh, so you have people to lean on and to rely on and to ask for guidance off rip and a lot of other freshmen don't have that. Yeah. Uh, what do you usually do to unwind after a tournament round? Well, the question is, what do I usually do to unwind after a tournament round? Um, I love to find like 30 minute Sitcom, sitcoms and just like watch a comedy and eat my dinner with that. And it's like, that's my 20, 20, 20 to 30 minutes to just laugh, release and feel like, okay, I've stepped away from golf for a second and just taking a breather. And then I short live because right before I go to bed, I'm marking up my yardage book and getting prepared for the next day. But that's, uh, that's how I decompress. <laughs> Okay, I had a question that was kind of related to the transition question. Yes. What do you think, or what was like kind of the biggest transition between college golf and professional golf? Okay. Um. Now that's the transition right there. Um, the question is, what's the biggest transition from college golf to professional golf? And uh, for me, <laughs> the biggest transition was you're playing junior golf. Your parents 
organize your travel. You're playing college golf, the coaches organize your travel, and then boom, you're a professional and everything is up to you. Um, and so I actually have a funny story. I remember my rookie year, I got a sponsor exemption into a tournament in February at the beginning of the season in Australia earlier that year and my passport I didn't realize had expired shortly before that and so I have a week now to get my passport updated get to Australia book those flights I'd never booked myself an international flight before so I'm like okay I'm reaching out to the LPGA they're helping me get the passport stuff taken care of and so I go to book my flight and uh, I'd never booked a flight so I just googled or I'd never booked an international flight so I googled okay what airport do I want to land in to get to Adelaide I'll Australia and I think I ended up going through Expedia but I guess I didn't say like that my stopping destination was not flexible and so I didn't pay attention as I was booking because I knew I typed in Adelaide I uh I land in Sydney and go to look for my transfer and they're like you don't have a flight to Adelaide like that was my final destination and I literally didn't have another flight to go to so I'm panicking and uh, I book another flight at the last minute was able to get to Adelaide later that day and I, I remember getting to Australia getting to the hotel room and just like almost crying because I was so stressed and overwhelmed and I was like oh my goodness I was happy I made it um, ended up having a fun week at that tournament but the real kicker was when I came back, um, like I said, the, my flights weren't connected to each other. So I go from Adelaide, flying back through Sydney. My flight in Adelaide was canceled. And uh, so I had to, they rebooked me on a flight for noon that day. And because they couldn't see my flight connection, they had no idea that I had a flight from Sydney back to the States. And I missed that flight. So then I ended up having to stay in Sydney an extra night, get a hotel there. And it was really a nightmare of a travel experience all around. And I tell you, I haven't made another mistake like that to this day. I'm like, I learned how to handle the travel right then and there. And, um, so yeah, that's that's just a funny like transition story for you and mine was a nightmare. But uh, you know, I think just yeah, handling everything yourself, figuring out an appropriate appropriate travel schedule. Um, you know, unlike when you're in school and when you're playing junior and amateur golf, you have like just the whole week to be on the golf course and especially my rookie year you feel like you have to be out there 24 7 and grinding and you also don't know the golf courses so you're studying and you if it's your rookie year um, at least for the first third of the season you're not getting into the pro-ams so you don't have access to the course um, on Wednesday so all of your work gets done on Monday and Tuesday and so you find yourself you know headed into the middle of the season often a little bit tired because you didn't figure out okay I can't play 18 Monday and Tuesday and then practice all day Wednesday and be fresh for the tournament so it's kind of those experiences getting fatigued realizing your mistakes and adjusting um, to the demand of the tour schedule and, and, and figuring out how to, you know, plan accordingly. And uh, it was just, it was, it was a fun adjustment. I loved being out there, but it was also tough for those reasons, just learning how to, to balance everything. And uh, you want to do everything when you're a rookie and you can't do everything or you burn out and so I think that's kind of the tough the tough part about it but it's also a lot of fun you get to meet um, you know a lot of the older vets out there he probably grew up uh, watching and, and looking up to and it's just really cool to be in that same environment and they're often really excited about imparting the wisdom that they've learned in their time there uh, to you and so soaking that in as well um, and yeah I feel like everybody takes care of you when you're a rookie in that transition so there's always uh, shoulders to lean on and, and people to talk to so it's, it's fun all around but I uh, hope none of you have travel horror stories like I did that first year <laughs> What's that? What were like the details that you noticed or like changed before you take the next step on golf? Um, the details that I noticed. Can you can you elaborate that on, a little bit like, for me? You know, like when you like play on the Q series or like professional like tournaments, what were like details that you like noticed? Like, um, of the tournaments themselves. Yeah. Um. What were the details of, of, of that I noticed that were different? Um, you know, I think 
you know, the air of the events themselves um, are a bit, it's just got that, it's got that professional feel to it. And so I feel like there's a bit more, um, I guess structure to how everything is happening. Everybody kind of shows up, they have their own agenda, uh, they're focused and, and, you know, it kind of, you know, encourages you to kind of show up and, 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 and be more on top of your game. Um, I guess if I think about, you know, differences in tournaments, um, you know, I think if, if, you know, especially for you all coming up right now through AJGA, um, I think the AJGA experience and, and what you all do, the MMs, the courses that you all play, the structure of the tournaments, um, you're actually getting what I would call like a mini professional experience in that. Um, and I think the biggest, the biggest difference in, in, in heading on to, to pro golf is you get out there, you have ropes and uh, you have spectators and, and, and fans. And I think that's probably Probably what changes the feel of the events mostly um, but I think you know you all and, and myself as a junior had the fortune of playing incredibly well-run tournaments like the AJGA events so you kind of fall seamlessly into that next step um, you know and, and and so I'm not sure um, or I am sure that this is this is a great stepping stone of representation, you know, other than locker rooms and, and dinners our locker rooms and breakfasts and lunches um, you know that's that's probably you know a bit of a difference as well but yeah i think um you know junior golf amateur golf has really um <laughs> excelled and 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 stepped up the, the experience all around do you have a pre-round ritual um the question is do i have a pre-round ritual um I don't know that I have a pre-round ritual. I have my routine um, that I do, like my warm up and everything like that. But actually, yeah, I would say I always at the beginning of the day, and sometimes I'll stick to it for a whole tournament starting on Thursday, is I'll choose a song and that's gonna be like my either happy song or motivational song for the week. And I'll put it on repeat while I'm doing um, my stretch and body warm up. And that's like what I use to get in my zone. So, yeah. Do you, do you like you work out before you go play or is there like a certain like stretching routine that you do? I know you talked about that. Yes. Like, is there anything else that you do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the question is, is there anything, um, a workout or anything that I do uh, before a round? And so I do actually focus a lot on glutes and core before I head out to the course. And I find that, you know, I don't know when it happened. I didn't used to, but now I can't just go right out to the course and have all my power. Uh, I have to activate my muscles now because they sleep unless I tell them to wake up. Um, uh, but yeah, so I do a, a glute and, and core routine, get those activated, and then um, I go through something. I have a physiotherapist that I work with on the road, and I started working with her my, um, my third season and it was pretty much you know for the reasons that I just said I started to notice that I was getting tighter on the golf course I was having a little bit of those aches towards the the end of the season and um, so I wanted to figure out what I could do to keep my body uh, loose and in shape all season long and so she's the one who gave me the routine that I have now and um, it's been incredibly helpful for me and and you know not needing to use my time on the range to really try to loosen up my body I get out there and ready to go so I can just literally warm my swing up with ease and and, and feel ready yeah what's your favorite uh, course on tour that you played oh that's a hard question we play some good courses um, the question is what's my favorite course on tour that I've played that I can say what my favorite is but I feel like there are some courses you step on and you know like if I'm playing well I feel like I could win here and so I feel like that for me would be actually a course that we play in Arkansas called Pinnacle and um, it's just that kind of course like I feel good on it it looks good to my eye um, the greens are always fast that's one of the re but I, I love the courses where the greens are the fastest I don't know about you guys but I love fast greens and so um, the faster the greens are consistently I'm like yeah I like this <laughs> What's one of your like motivational or happy songs that you listen to? <laughs> um, I'm gonna keep it real. Uh, 
I'm an Atlanta baby, so I might listen to a trap song or two to really get me in my in my groove. Yeah, I'm just gonna be sorry, parents. Um, but yeah, that gets me ready to go. It gets me ready to get out on the golf course and yeah, charge. What song? I'm not gonna say this. <laughs> She's trying to get me in trouble. Hampton, you recording? Where's he at? See, nope. <laughs> the camera's on. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? Anybody? I have one less. Yeah. If you could go back and talk to like your 16 year old self, what words of wisdom would you say to her? The question is if I could go back and talk to my 16 year old self um, and share some wisdom, what would I say to her? Um, that's an incredible question. I think I would say you're making the right decisions. Um, but I think I would say to her maybe take advantage of my last two years in college and focus a little more on just tightening up the short game and uh, specifically my chipping. Cause I think that's something that I found I had to work aggressively on uh, when I got to tour. And I think the courses are just harder. The grass is thicker, rough's tougher. And so I think had I been a little more prepared uh, for that, I right out of the gate, I would have had, you know, um, just a couple, a couple, uh, you know, tighter finishes that, that rookie year. And I think that, you know, the easier the starting experience is, the better. And so I would think maybe just take advantage of that time. Um, but yeah, um, I'd say keep finding ways to make it fun. And most importantly, play with your friends and never lose that love and passion for the game. Cause I think that's something that over the last couple of years, I've also lent a little bit more focus to, and that's when I'm off the course, having those rounds that remind me why I love the game of golf, uh, just as it is. Yeah. Can I take another one? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> During college, what helped you not feel overwhelmed when your mind is being uh, both academics and goals? Yes. Um, the question is, in college, what helped me feel not overwhelmed managing both uh, academics and golf? And I actually had a running joke, and I feel like I managed to just, I felt, I figured out how to feel okay with never being ahead and just accepting that I was just going to have to tackle everything as it popped up. And I feel like once I just accepted the fact that everything was running at me and I at it, then it just kind of fell in step. Um, but one thing by the time my sophomore year came that I figured out how to do was at the beginning of every week, make sure that I knew all the school uh, assignments that I, or the classroom assignments that I was gonna have through Friday so that nothing would throw me for a loop in the middle of the week because there's nothing worse than realizing you've got a midterm or some paper due uh, Thursday night at midnight when you've got to be up for workouts and in the gym at 5.30 the next morning and you're just in a rough, rough predicament after that. So uh, I figured out how to stay out of those kinds of situations. But, you know, I think everybody, you know, has their own kind of groove for it. And I think for me, that was it. Just taking a look every week at what was coming so that nothing surprised me. Yeah. Good question. Okay. All right. I just have one more for you before you go. Okay. Last one. Okay. What one piece of advice would you give these girls in this tournament on this course this week? One piece of advice on this course is stay below the pin. I, uh, the course, if, if I remember when I was playing it all the time, the greens were really fast and a couple of those downhill putts can get away from you. But if you stay below the pin out here, you make a lot of birdies. So have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Thank you all for having me play well this weekend. Thank you. Oh, yes, thank you, Mariah, so much. I know we appreciate it a lot for you to host this tournament and give back to junior golf. And I know these girls appreciate the opportunity as well and to hear from you. So just one last time, everyone, we can just thank Mariah for being out here tonight. And thank you all for coming out. We have some snacks left, so feel free, parents, players, if you want another one, feel free to grab one on your way out. And Mariah will be over here, so you're welcome to come over here and say hi to her, take a picture or whatever. So thank you guys for, again, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.